everybody. Welcome back to another video here at Red Dead Reptiles. For those of you just joined us, I'm Corey Samples. And for those of y'all joining us again, we'll get right into it. So, in this video, we're going to cover where would you want to get this animal and how would you know if this animal is for you. <clears throat> as far as I, I want to uh, jump to the second of which I said first. So, how would you know if this animal is for you? Um, most of us here in the reptile industry uh, have started out with something maybe like such. Something small, something that's a good learner, good novice or beginner animal, uh, that is relatively easy to maintain. Um, a lot of us started off as these, so, uh, you know, is this animal for you? I personally feel like this animal is for everybody. Uh, anybody who is getting into the reptile world all the way up to expert keepers uh, such as myself <clears throat> absolutely love leopard geckos I mean look how cute they're always smiling and they're so super soft and sweet huh yes they're so soft and sweet it for me I don't know what what it would be not to to love these little things I mean they they don't have uh, the most outgoing personalities uh and they're not the absolute smartest reptile on the planet but they are some of the absolute cutest and most friendliest little things so to me uh they're some of the best animals uh or reptiles out there to own uh and again even with uh keepers such as myself who are into the bigger bigger lizards uh, I still enjoy keeping these guys around. We have quite a few of them around here because I and my wife both love leopard geckos. Now, while true this is my son's, again, we have quite a few around here because we love leopard geckos. And that right there goes back to what I was saying a second ago. This is my son's very first reptile. And look how great he looks. My son has done absolutely amazing with him over the last year and a half, almost two years that he's had him. He is beautiful and thriving. Now, again, we did have a little bit of an incident back when he was really young with his tail, but he has since regrown it as such to a nub, not a, not a full tail like what I have said. Uh, but he looks absolutely amazing, and he acts absolutely amazing. Um, they are fast but slow enough where they're still catchable, uh, and they're light enough to where when they take a tumble, it's not so bad on them, which doesn't really hurt you as bad because uh, if you're like me, when I watch my animals take a tumble and if I think they've gotten hurt, I freak out inside. Uh, so, yeah, okay, uh, that being said, because, you know, for some people, uh, the only reason I would say that this animal would not be for you is if you're just purely a snake person. If you're purely a snake person, then you might not like the leopard gecko, but if you love all reptiles, uh, or if you're partial to lizards, then I can almost guarantee you that you have a firm, planted, deep, deep-rooted love for these little things. And it would be hard not to because for a lot of us in the lizard side of the world, these little guys, or a bearded dragon, or both, as in my case, uh, kind of started off our love for lizards. Huh. Yep, kind of started it off. And that's, that, again, that just makes them the absolute bee's knees to keep. Uh, where should you get one and where should you not get one? Uh, I think we all know that I'm a big proponent of not buying uh, reptiles at pet stores such as PetSmart, Petco. Uh, and, and again, this is, uh, nobody's paying me to say anything like that. Um, and while I, I, I just feel that uh, rather than go to Petco where a lot of these animals are farm bred or milled, uh, you know, come from beer mills, uh, a lot of these animals go down the drain, and a lot of these animals are just thrown together and whatever comes out, comes out. Uh, I would rather go to a breeder who has taken the time to properly work with these guys and to uh, give proper selection to quality morph. That's what I would like. Uh, because when you're looking for quality morph, you're getting quality temperament and quality health as well. Uh, and I'm a big proponent of quality health. So when I go to PetSmart or Petco or, you know, uh, any little, pet, any mainstream pet store, 
I find that a lot of these animals go down the drain just because they are not sought and cared for like what a actual breeder puts into their animals. Uh, I can tell you that, well, I can promise you that PetSmart, uh, which is where a lot of these are sold at, uh, does not put the time and effort into their breeding and animals that I put into mine, nor care, nor attention to detail. Uh, so for me, it's all about going to a breeder. Every one of them that we have have come from a breeder uh, that has taken time and effort to create, you know, a beautiful morph, uh, beautiful quality. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really what I prefer. Uh, <clears throat> It, a lot of people get their leopard geckos on rehomes. Um, I see a lot of these guys on Facebook uh, where, you know, people, I can't take care of my leopard gecko and uh, I need to find my leopard gecko a new home and, and, and don't even have uh, proper husbandry from the get-go. Uh, I know a lot of people that's, that have a bad taste for these things uh, say they're, they die off quickly and that's absolutely not the case. Uh, if that was the case, we wouldn't keep these around as constant pets in captivity. Uh, it is all about how you're going to take care of these animals. Um, you know, husbandry, 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 husbandry. I can sit here and scream that at the top of my lungs if I wanted for a full 24 hours and you guys still most of you guys uh, still wouldn't think of it being as, as important as it really is uh, man for for these guys uh, for reptiles in general husbandry is everything so uh, it's it just again it, going to a proper breeder who has the proper husbandry who has put in the time and effort that's that's uh, what you really want. Um, you know, when you first get these guys, uh, I like to say 15 to 30 days of feeding and watering, but not really interacting. Kind of let your animal get used to the sights and sounds of your domicile. So it's new environment. Uh, after that, they say, and I've heard a lot of people tell it. I think this is kind of differing opinion. I've heard a lot of people say that, uh, you know, as far as leopard geckos, because their skin is so scotious that you should not handle them all the time and that it can irritate them uh, and make them aggressive. However, I'll tell you that we handle ours all the time. <coughs> My son has handled his all the time. And what we have here is an absolutely stunning creature who absolutely shows no aggression and loves being handled, comes to the window as soon as it sees one of us loves to come out and just be loved on and roam and get some enrichment, huh, Blue? Um, you know, I, I want to speak on price, and, and sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here contemplating on how to base price on something like this. Uh, let, let me tell you that I've had a lot of people ask me how do you know if a reptile is too much or if they're not asking enough for it? Uh, price on a reptile, in my opinion, is like art. Okay, these guys are like living art. It's all about what you feel that animal is worth. So if you go to a breeder and you talk and they shoot you a price, let's, let's say, figuratively speaking, you went there and somebody said 50 bucks for this guy. If you're happy paying 50 bucks, if you feel the animal's worth 50 bucks, then you got a good deal and that you should be happy with just that. Uh, if you went and somebody was charging you 150 or 200 bucks, maybe that animal is not really uh, monetary wise worth the, the uh, 150, 200 bucks, but to you is that animal worth the 150 to 200 bucks so i have a lot of people that go to like mom and pop shops and stuff like that and they're like oh the animal was overpriced here and the other animal was overpriced there and well i could go here and get it cheaper yeah you you probably could but did the place that you could get it cheaper take time to put into their animals and make it super sweet like so before it came to you uh 
did you get a healthy animal or did you get a sickly animal? Did you get a guarantee with that animal or did you get an as is guarantee with that animal? Were you given any advice with that animal? And if so, were you given proper advice with that animal? Or were you told what you wanted to hear or what they thought you wanted to hear to get a proper sale? Unfortunately, that's what most pet stores do. <clears throat> Not mom and pop shops, but mainstream pet stores. Uh, and corporate franchises is all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna sit here and continue to name names. If you're a big franchise store, nine times out of 10, you're selling packages, uh, bearded dragon kits, uh, gecko kits, iguana kits, crap like that, that in, in all reality is complete BS. Uh, but it is what it is. So if you feel you're paying a good amount for the animal, but it's worth it to you, then, then purchase the animal. Listen, I've got animals that some people looked at me and been like, you, you spent tens of thousands of dollars on what? And you spent thousands and thousands of dollars where? Why? Well, because I feel the animal's worth that. And I feel maybe that down the road, the animal will pay me that back in happiness or even maybe in monetary by breeding. So. To me, in the uh, in the animal industry now, there is a difference. Let me let me back up. There is a difference between getting screwed. Nobody's going out and paying a thousand dollars, five hundred to a thousand dollars for a leopard gecko, unless it's a Cuban knight or uh, you know a black knight. You know what I mean? Uh, then maybe you're gonna pay some money for that leopard gecko, but nine times out of ten, regular morphs, especially even one like this, costs you seventy five to. A, Anywhere from sixty-five to a hundred bucks. I mean, you're not, you're not, you're not paying overzealous amounts of money for something like this. Uh, so there is a difference between getting screwed. But let's say uh, you could buy a a one like this that was fifty bucks, or you could buy one like this that was hundred and ten bucks. And the difference being, one was socialized and super nice and would chill with you like this, and. Uh, that's the 110 bucks, and the 50 bucks one would run off and hide every time you came around. Which one would you rather pay for? Truthfully, which one would you rather pay for? Uh, a lot of people are gonna jump on the cheaper one right away, but I'm actually gonna lean more toward the $110 one because I'm gonna lean toward the one that has had more work put into it. Um, to me, it's it's about somebody who's taking pride in their animals just because, just because I take pride in mine. So, it's, it's definitely something that I think about uh, all the time. Uh, you know, and, and that's that. Uh, now, let's, let's cover this real quick. If you feel like you get this animal and it's not for you. Of course, if you feel like the animal's not for you beforehand, you're obviously not going to get the animal. Uh, but let's say you get a leopard gecko and you feel it's not for you. Please don't just let it go. Or abandon it. Or just let it suffer. Ooh, sorry, there are too many of us out there, and when I say us, I mean keepers, reptile uh, extraordinaires that will take in your lovely Leo or help you find it a good home. Uh, and people, please don't be mad if you see somebody that takes on an animal and, re and then, you know, months down the road you see it go up for rehome. Uh, I have had uh, many of animals come through my home that I have been turned over to me and I have brought back to health and adopted out down the road because I don't need to keep every little animal that comes in. I want to find a lot of these animals nice forever homes and unfortunately my home is just not a forever home for everything. Uh, but a lot of people get butt hurt when uh, you know, they ask for a rehoming fee. To me, you paying that rehoming fee shows me your dedication to actually wanting the animal. Uh, you know, how if I just hand you over a free animal and I don't know you from willy-nilly, how do I know you're actually gonna take care of that animal? You spending maybe that 50 to 100 bucks for the rehoming fee kinda doesn't guarantee me, but it at least makes me feel a little better that you're vested into this animal a little bit and that you're gonna take care of it. Uh, so, Think about that. I mean, there are also zoos and sanctuaries and reptile places across the country, the globe, that deal with these things. If you don't want your animal, I'm telling you, there are places out there, rescues including, that will take them in. 
So again, please don't just dump them or let them go down the drain. If you feel like you can't take care of your animal, say something before it's too late. You wouldn't want to be stuck in a box and forgotten about either. Uh, and so we should love and respect our friends just the same. Uh, again, we've all you know been through hard times and some of us go through more hard times and if we have to find a new home for our animals, it's tough, but you know, let's let's do it with a silver lining or silver lining and understand that they are going to a good home or that you're finding them a good home. Uh, and so so let's treat them with respect. Uh, I appreciate y'all staying with me and uh, we'll see y'all after the next one.